Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why and how I got hit in school. I'm wearing a wig because I'm bleaching my hair at the moment, like, it's kind of still yellow. Up until I was nine years old, I grew up in Australia over in Sydney. And how schooling went over there was I was always late to school because my mom wasn't very organized. Just so you guys know, please don't hate my parents in any of these situations. I'm very, very close with them. I'm very blessed to have them. I have a very, very good family, so please. So my mom always, always took me to school late. It would be so late that it, it was just embarrassing to show up at school. It's like who shows up at school past lunchtime you know what I mean so we would just like end up not going over six months of being in year three I wasn't in school and when I was in school I was late I was not paying attention I don't remember ever doing a single bit of homework we weren't disciplined whenever I showed up to class and I didn't do my homework didn't really say anything about it I was never really disciplined at school when I moved to Thailand to live with my dad I was nine years old going on ten and I hadn't been in school for several months. I had a really rough few years at that time, right before I moved to Thailand. I didn't know how to shower. Sorry, mom, but I wasn't really fed. When I arrived with my dad, the first thing he did was the morning after we arrived, my brother and I, he took us to the hair salon and cut my hair up to here. So I had long hair and this is the first time in my life I have ever had short hair. And his reasoning for it was he put all that shit from the past behind. I also, me and my brother had lice in our hair. We had lice in our hair for many years. Um, so he took us to the salon, gave us some like lice treatment, cut our hair this short. It was January when, when we arrived to his care. So he was like, this is gonna be a fresh start. This is a new year for you. Like he didn't even wanna know what was happening back in Australia because all he knows is that everything was just terrible. My stepmom, my dad's wife, AK, she removed all the lice in my hair. She spent hours where I was sitting in the sun just picking out the lice, picking out the lice. It was about the second day or third day that we arrived and we were put into school and it was like a Wednesday. So like dad didn't even wait until the following Monday. I get his reasoning. I'm so glad that he did this. You've been out of school for so long. Like at nine years old, you need to be in school. He arranged it so that I was in school as soon as possible. I was going into year four and maybe I did about, it's four o'clock. Maybe I did about 50 days of year three. So I didn't even complete like a whole school year of year three. I don't even remember finishing a whole term. Very hard video to film. Like we were like homeless and all that stuff. Now I'm obviously really happy that my dad just like quickly put me into school. He was like, get them straight into a routine. Let's get these kids straight into a routine. Like we had absolutely no routine whatsoever. Pretty much two or three days after we arrived, I was starting my first class of year four. Now with the schooling system in Thailand, by the time it's January, basically, you are in like the second term. But in Australia, if you start in January or February, you are in your first term. So I entered the classroom with kids who already knew each other, who already knew the teacher, who already knew what they were learning. I was put in the middle of a semester, had no idea what I was learning, didn't know basic maths. <laughs> okay, so disclaimer, like the reason why I get emotional is because like I really remember this stuff, like it really affected me. I remember not being able to write the letter R, feeling so stupid because I couldn't write. Like I knew how to write, but because it was so many months from having something to write, um, I just, it took me a little bit to pick up and I was in a classroom of eight kids including me which means there was seven other kids so it was a very very small classroom and my teacher because this is an international school was an American teacher and he was a military type teacher because he was in the military in America. The first thing he did was bully me for my accent. Anything I said he would make fun of me. I grew up in Australia for my first, you know, nine years. If I said here in Australia, if you say car, it's like car. Look at that car driving over there. You know what I mean? Like, it's like they use the car to go to the shops. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's car, <laughs> car here. And so I would say that and he'd be like, it's not car, it's car. That's the reason why I have a bit of an American accent today because I was so sensitive to being bullied by him that I would just like, say things the way he wanted me to say it because if i said anything that was in 
my regular Australian accent, like at the time, you know, because I grew up in Australia, he would make fun of me. And I just, I just didn't want him to point anything out. I didn't want him to look at me. I didn't want any attention. Like I was a very, very shy, sensitive kid. Like any of my family members can tell you that like, I was my mom's shadow. I was my dad's shadow. Like if I walked with anyone, I walked behind them, like closely behind them. Like I was a very shy kid. I didn't make friends that weren't my brother's friends. All of my friends were made through my brother. I didn't speak much. Although it was international, they were very comfortable with typically Asian punishments. And I've been to other Asian schools. Um, so hitting is completely normal. Um, in some of them, of course, not all of them. He would hit us. He would hit the back of our heads. He would hit our fingers. He would push us, shove us. And he would, to me, the worst was humiliating. Like he would humiliate me. We'll talk about the hitting first. He hit me by slapping the back of my head. And it was when you got an answer wrong, when he felt like it, and when you took too long to answer, if you were talking too much, if you weren't listening, slap you in the back of the head. I remember he didn't do this one specific one to me, but when he slapped you, like hit you just because, he would always say the word mosquito. So he would hit you and be like, oh mosquito, and like pretend that there's a mosquito. But like, obviously every single person in the class knew there's no mosquito. He just wanted to hit you and to him sometimes it was funny and to him it was sometimes like a power thing like he wanted to be like i can control these kids or whatever so he would be like Tch, mosquito you know so i was just like not used to that went to school in australia and i wouldn't do my homework i never did my homework and i never ever ever got hit it was so sad because like i'd always come home and i'd always cry and I'd always cry to my dad and be like, oh, I don't want to go to school. Like, I don't want to go to school. I remember listening to music to, like, help me, like, get through all this. Like, I was so obsessed with Avril Lavigne. She had this one song called Keep Holding On. And I would, like, listen to it on repeat. And I'm like, oh, keep holding on. And I kept telling my dad, like, I just want to move to year three because I'm not smart enough for, like, year four. I remember begging him, like, begging and begging, being like, please, can you please ask the principal to move me to year three? And he just, my, I just remember all my dad's counter arguments. He was just like look like you just need some time to catch up he surely isn't that mean like you're just being a bit sensitive like maybe he's just joking and then he'd be like well look if you go back to year three the next year you'll have to have him and that's an even longer time like now you're starting in term two if you have him next year you're gonna have him for term one two two and three and so my dad was just like always like you know trying to motivate me to just like stay in this class i just remember like begging and being like i just want to like move down a year like i'm just so stupid like he always made me feel so dumb of course it was like it started off with like the accent thing and then it was um for example in australia the school i went to like you would leave your pencil case in class so you had like a class pencil case to use and so i remember my first weekend like my first week at school i left my pencil case in my classroom because in my previous school you'd always leave your pencil case you never took your pencil case home it was always just like left in school and so i remember i came to school on monday and he made me stand in the front of the class and just like said all this like horrible stuff about he was like are you dumb like like how are you gonna do your homework like you're not gonna have any pencils at home and like i was so shy at the time i couldn't just be like oh in my old school like that's what we did like i i wasn't aware of that there was no excuse of like oh i'm new like now when i think about it i wish there was some way that I could like pull him aside and be like dude I've like went through so much trauma like right before I arrived here and like I didn't even have time to like settle down here I was already such a sensitive kid I still am <laughs> look at me like this is this stuff is really like touchy I didn't think I'd be this like triggered I guess like looking back I wish I like pulled him aside and was like hey look like I just went through like like such traumatic time i didn't even like have time to like process that to put it in perspective just imagine not going to school and being homeless and then suddenly 
within a few days time you're in a completely different country you have to go to school suddenly have to do all these routines that you've just never done like your mom isn't there anymore and every day you're being called stupid and dumb and humiliated for just like not knowing simple things because i was so consumed by how horrible this teacher treated me that i didn't have that time to process like what went on when we were homeless i had to deal with the trauma i went through as a child in Australia before I was nine, before I arrived into Highland. I had to deal with that a lot later on. And because I dealt with it so much later, it affected my high schooling because I had to go to therapy. Obviously parents don't know like how to handle that. My dad didn't know what we went through because he just simply said he didn't want to hear it. Like it would break his heart if he ever heard like the stuff that we had to go through and he wasn't there to like protect us. And so like if he knew, like I feel like he would have put us into therapy like straight away at the age of nine. Like I would much rather go through therapy dealing with that trauma at a young age instead of burying it and burying it. When I was old enough, like 15, 14, by then I was able to process it. Even like younger than that, I was able to process the things that happened for it to affect my pretty much my high school career because I just like kept burying all these like feelings. I remember he he thought the way that I said lunchbox was funny. He hit me in the back of my head when I would get a mathematic question wrong. So I would go home and I'd tell my dad about it and he'd be like, you know, try to lift me up. My dad would teach me maths and we would do this like every day after school just because like one. I don't think my dad wanted me to be hit again and two like I was just so behind on everything like all the kids were so much smarter than me like they obviously finished year three like they obviously had like a normal routine and like I just didn't always getting like a little bit stressed with my dad because I'm like I just don't get it like I just I don't know how I'm supposed to memorize this like mathematical chart like I just like I can't do it my dad was just like just practice just practice just practice and my dad was super resilient like I remember at least once a week I would come home crying like so upset and I remember like even on the way home like I would just like have to hold my tears like and just like look like everything was okay and I'm like I was nine years old like I was 10 years old and I had to like pretend everything is fine because my stepmom was the one to pick me up from school and I wouldn't cry until my dad came home and that's when I would like cry and just like tell him all about it and this was like so often like so often every Friday in school we had this like maths quiz if you got one wrong you'd get in trouble and being in trouble means humiliation or being hit and I just remember like always praying like on a Thursday night like I hope I'm sick tomorrow like I hope something bad happens to me tomorrow like I remember like we would ride a motorbike to school so it would be me in the front and my dad in the middle and my brother in the back and we would ride the motorbike and I remember like trying so hard to like move the motorbike so that we would go through a different different street because like there's so much traffic in the morning like Thailand we lived in Bangkok like there's just so much so much traffic and so i just kept thinking like if i try to turn us to a different street then it would make us late and then i might miss the test or whatever so we also had show and tell at school in australia where i grew up it was show or tell so i remember in year one year two year three whenever we did it it was if you didn't have something to show you just had to tell a story i remember like in year one I didn't bring anything to show so I just told a story about this weekend we went to the beach and we went with our dogs etc etc so that's what it was like where I grew up it was show or tell my first week of school I did not know in this school it was show and tell so you had to show something and tell and talk about it he told me that monday because we had show or tell on tuesday he told me that monday this is still we're literally still my first week of school and he was like okay tomorrow's show and tell well, i thought it was show or tell so make sure you bring something and he said that to the whole class so i thought you know some people were gonna bring stuff and some people were just gonna tell them tell them about their weekend and i think i had a pretty good weekend so i was just like you know what i'm just gonna tell them about my weekend so i go to school on the tuesday and everyone has something on the table and my teacher, his name was Mr. George, he was like, what did you bring? And I was like, oh, I didn't bring anything. And he was like, you bonehead, like, this is show and tell. 
what are you gonna show? I was too shy to be like, oh, like in my school, it was show or tell. So you were, you could tell a story. So he takes off his shoe and he's like, you're gonna show and tell this shoe. So I pick up the shoe and I'm in the front of the class, fucking stunk. So this is Mr. George's shoe. It's a big shoe. It looks like it's leather or whatever it is. I'm really sorry for, you know, getting emotional. Anything before the age of like 11 is very like triggering to me. Anyways, I started to catch up in school. So he stopped calling me stupid, calling me a bonehead. You know, he stopped hitting me because I started to get the routines. I, I learned to do my homework. I also got hit for like not doing my homework. I learned that I was responsible for doing my homework. I was responsible for taking my pencil case home. I was responsible for learning the material that we needed to learn. I remember the first time I got something right. <laughs> I was made to feel so stupid that like I, I literally remember the first time I got something right and there was these three jugs drawn on the board It was an eight liter jug a three liter and a two liter and he was like What do you have to do to get one of these jugs to have four liters? And so we were all like sitting and like figuring out like what do we have to do? And then he was like, oh, do you want to try and I was like, okay So I stood up to the front of the board and my knees were like shaking like I was shaking so much and he was like Why are you shaking and like he was he was just like stand up straight like stand up tall speak louder <laughs> Which is like so in intimidating for me you got the three liter put it into the eight liter you fill up the three liter again put it into the eight liter so that's six liters and then you get the two liters and then you take away two liters from the six liters and then that's four liters and he was like great next time speak louder and i was like oh my god i got something right like the first time i got something right the rest of the year i became a really good student towards the end of it he always described me as like a very sweet student like anytime any student would like say something rude to me or rude about me or whatever he'd be like why would you say that to sweet johanna like johanna's my birth name by the way um to make this a positive story because it really really is a positive story even though i'm like triggered as fuck and, like i learned discipline from this teacher he had a very particular way for us to write our notes it was like you know date here and whatever everything was very organized and disciplined routine wise because of that i was a good student after that like everything every school i went to every class i had after mr george i was very organized i was very very on top of homework um i'm telling you right now i have never missed a homework after mr george hit me i never ever missed a homework you can ask any of my classmates i never ever like ever like i'm serious when i say this like i've never missed a homework and i really put emphasis on this because i feel like some people are like oh i never didn't do my homework but they like actually like missed a few homeworks like i I fucking didn't. I never missed a homework. To hold myself accountable because, you know, when I was in school in Australia, like, if I didn't do my homework, nobody cared. If I didn't do good in a test, you know, like, no, nobody cared. You know, nobody cared if I was late. Like, nobody cared. So, to then have this teacher, he pretty much, like, forced me to be super organized by humiliating me and hitting me. He did that to other students as well. Doesn't make it okay. I don't think it's right to hit students, but I honestly think what was worse was him humiliating me, him calling me stupid, like, him calling me bonehead, him calling me dumb um that to me was more like painful than like actually hitting me like i'd rather him hit me a bunch more times than saying all those things and like i still stand by like even though he taught me well because he was he was actually a great teacher like teaching wise when he wasn't being fucking rude um he taught me well even though his approach was very aggressive like i literally saw him lift up a student and push them against the wall um <laughs> Literally, I wish he motivated me to want to be organized, to want to be smarter. Instead, he made me fear him so much that I had to be smarter, that I had to be organized, that I had to be on top of everything. But at the end of the day, like, to me, it's a good experience because, one, I really got to pay attention. Like, it forced me to pay attention. I never paid 
attention in class. I never did my homework before him. I, I was never, you know, on time. I didn't care about tests, basically. But with him, he made me care. Like, he made me care about my grades. He made me care about um, learning things. He made me care about reaching certain milestones. And he also gave me a few awards. By the end of it, he was actually very, very protective of me. Weirdly enough, I didn't have any friends. So I actually sat with him at lunch. Imagine being like so scared of a teacher but like having no friends and you, you sit with your teacher at lunch. This is why I'm fucked up. <laughs> Let's make this positive but like when we were outside of school environment as in like at lunch like when we were in like a teaching and learning environment he was very nice to me. So for example at lunch the students would be like running around screaming and he'd be like why, why can't you guys be like Johanna? But it was also because you know they had friends so they could run around. <laughs> Let's never talk about this shit again. Can you like see how distressed I am? I'm literally so distressed. I've never been like more triggered my whole life. I don't even know if I'm gonna post this. But yeah, so this is a story of how I got hit in school. I don't think it's right to call kids stupid. They obviously take it to heart. Exhibit A. Honestly, he's lucky that he called a really fucking strong badass bitch a <laughs> he's really lucky that he called a strong badass bitch like me stupid because if it was another kid they could have believed it and think hey i'm stupid like i'm not gonna do anything and just give up he's honestly lucky that he called me stupid that he called me dumb that he hit me because i feel like if it was another kid maybe they would have believed that their whole life and i was strong enough and smart enough to know that like i'm better and i can be smarter and that i can be organized and that i can be a good student and that i'm not stupid and i can prove him wrong but some kids could hear that and be like my mom and dad tell me that too so maybe it's true and then they give up so thank you guys so much for listening i am going to rip off my eyelashes and let myself cry a little bit not because I'm sad that this happened. Such a big trigger for me is like talking about the past, like talking about childhood and stuff like that is so triggering for me. And if I'm posting this, please be delicate with me because I'm obviously a very sensitive person. I'm very critical of myself. I think that's why I took a lot of this really hard on top of all the trauma I went through. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to cry now. I <laughs> love you guys all so much. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Ew, that's so gross. Bye.